This video demonstrates features of Active at Uneraser version 8.0. Active at Uneraser will allow the user to recover deleted files from a partition or disk by scanning for file signatures. To begin this process, across the top we will click Last Chance. Then we will make sure only the desired drive is selected and click Next. In this window, we may select to scan for all possible file types. Active at an eraser has added 26 more predefined file signatures, including eBooks, Adobe Flash, and Real Audio. You may also deselect any file formats you do not wish to scan for. In my scenario, I am looking for some Adobe files and some music files, so I will deselect everything else. And I do this to help my scan run faster, and then I will click Start. The length of time it takes to run a scan is determined by the speed of your computer, the size of the drive being scanned, and the amount of signatures being searched for. Once the scan is complete, I can select signature files along the left to see the discovered files. I can tell that my scan discovered 100 Adobe files and 14 music and audio files. If I open the Adobe files, I can see 6 of those files were PDF files and 94 were Photoshop files. If I open these folders, I can see it did not recover file names. So if I would like to recover these files, I can do so and I may select a name for them. To do this, I will close these folders, and I will select them both, then I will choose Unerase. When I select Unerase, I can choose a location to unerase the files to. I could choose to unerase all or only deleted files. I may unerase named streams, I could browse the output folder after it's complete. I could rename the file extensions and I can organize files by metadata. These Adobe files don't have any metadata, but if I click More Options, I can now select to rename my files. Each file will rename to recovered Adobe files with a numeric indicator. Underneath that, I can select if I want to generate a unique file name. So if I save a file to a location where that file name already exists, the new file will get a unique name. I could overwrite the existing file, either being warned ahead of time or not. Or I could skip saving that particular file. Let's click Apply. And then I will select an erase. And then on my desktop, I can see Adobe Files. And if I open Adobe Files, I can see both PDF and Photoshop. And if I open Photoshop, I can see that each file has been given the recovered Adobe Files name as well as a numeric indicator afterward. Now let's say for a moment I have files that I want to organize into specific folders. For example, Music and audio files. If I open my MP3 folder and select an MP3 file, I can use the organizer to alter my attributes for MP3s. Right now, my MP3 is organized by album as the first attribute, then by artist, then by title. If I wanted the artist to be the first attribute, I could select artist, click up, and now click Apply. Now, Artist is the first attribute. So when I go to recover these files by selecting the MP3 folder and then an Erase, I can choose to organize the file by metadata, attribute-based folder depth of 1. So in my MP3 folder in the output destination, I will see one separate folder per different artist in my mp3 folder. Let's see what that looks like. Let's click Unerase. 
and with the automatic output, here's my music and audio files, MP3. Now you may be wondering what happened to those other file types, for example, OGG and WAV. Those were not recovered as I did not have them selected before clicking on Erase. I will open my MP3. And now I see separate folders per artist. And within those folders, I see the actual recovered files. Another great feature of using Active at Uneraser is the user can access the raw data contained within discovered files. To do this, select a scanned file, and in the toolbar, click Action, Open Disk Editor. This will open the raw data file in Active at Disk Editor, allowing the user to edit and inspect the raw data of files. Active at an eraser can do more than recover single files and folders. You may recover all files from within a driver partition or make a sector by sector copy of a driver partition. To do this along the left, I will select my original flash drive and then select the flash drive on the main body. Up above, I will click Unerase, and here's where I have my options. I may select to recover only files and folders, or I may copy all volume data, a sector by sector copy. Let's choose that, and then let's choose a destination. It is important to note that the target disk will be reformatted and all existing data on it will be lost. After the recovery process, the target will contain only the partition and include all the data from the source drive. I will select my secondary USB device and I will click Unerase. This is your last chance to back out of this process before all of the data on the target drive gets erased. I will say yes, and the length of time this process takes will be determined by the amount of data to be transferred and the speed of your computer. With my sector by sector copying complete, I can see my original USB drive on the left and its duplicate destination drive on the right.